Hello everyone. So I'm uh, Ola Utsson, principal of analytics at a company called Avos. I'm uh, Sebastian, data scientist at Avos, also leading the data science team. Um, so we're going to talk a bit about attribution modeling and specifically how you can use and apply game theory to improve uh, the models that you create and, and therefore the sort of measurability of your uh, marketing and sales efforts. So we're going to go through a couple of things. First, I'm going to touch briefly on uh, what attribution modeling is uh, and the different sort of approaches that there are. Uh, the concept itself is nothing new, uh, but there are some new quite exciting approaches to it. Uh, and then we're going to go into the game theory approach, and then Sebastian is going to talk about uh, a predicting, predictive modeling approach, and then hopefully we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, <clears throat> so what is attribution modeling? Um, well, basically, uh, what we're trying to do is to sort of uh, measure the impact of different touch points on a success factor. Uh, and the success factor could be conversions, it could be revenue, or it could be something like a customer lifetime value. Uh, so the question we're really trying to answer is how much of the generated revenue, say, should be attributed to, say, uh, paid search, or to your email, or to your website, or to social media. Um, and there are various different ways of doing this, uh, which are available in the market today, in things like Google Analytics. Um, but there are basically two different categories of, of uh, approaching this problem. Where one is rule-based. Um, so what you do in rule-based is basically you make assumptions about how these things work. So they can be things like first click or last click, meaning that uh, you would attribute all the revenue um, to the touch point that the customer uh, came into contact with first or last, or you can do sort of various combinations of those. Uh, but then there are also algorithmic approaches, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, so there's something called Markov chains, uh, which we're not going to touch on, but that's sort of chains of probability where the, the next probability depends on the states before. But the two uh, that we're going to touch upon today is Shapley values, uh, which is uh, the game theory approach. And then Sebastian is going to talk about um, how you can apply predictive modeling uh, to attribution modeling. Um, <clears throat> So let's start off with, with the game theory approach. And so what is game theory? Well, game theory is basically the science of uh, logical decision making. Uh, and that can be applied to humans, and, or it can be applied to computers. Uh, Shapley values is, is uh, a concept within game theory. Uh, <clears throat> and what we're trying to do with Shapley values is basically we look at uh, collaborative games. So games could be anything, really. It could be a negotiation, or it could be um, three people painting a house together, or it can be um, that they play some kind of card game that results in some kind of revenue. Uh, and what we're trying to do with the Shapley value is exactly the same question as in attribution modeling, why it's a good, uh, and that's why it's a good concept. So what we're trying to say is, so the total revenue generated by these players playing a game, how do we actually fairly attribute that to the different players that took part in the game? So the objective is to give fair credit to each player. Um, so I'm going to walk through an example of how we actually calculate the Shapley values, so hopefully you'll, you'll follow. <coughs> um, so the first thing you have to do is to look at all the different combinations of uh, which players are actually taking part in the game. So the players can play for themselves, uh, so A, B, and C, or they can play in pairs, so A and B, or A and C, or B and C, uh, or all of the players can be part of the game, so A, B, and C, which is really what we're after in the end. Um, so using all of these combinations, you can calculate the, the revenue based on this. So we know for, uh, that when player A plays alone, he gets a revenue of 7. And we know that when player C plays alone, she gets a revenue of 6. Uh, but then we also know on the <coughs> middle, middle left down there that when players A and C play together, they generate 15, which is actually more than the sum of the two. Uh, so they get some sort of benefit from, from actually playing together. And then we know that when each of the three players play together, they generate uh, a revenue of 19, which is the number that then, in the end, we're actually going to try to attribute to all the different players. Uh, so using these numbers, uh, then the next step we need to do is to figure out all the different combinations that the players can actually enter the game, which is then the equivalent to uh, when <coughs> leads or prospects actually came in, uh, into contact with the different touch points and in what order that actually happened. So in this case, when we have three players, uh, there are six possible combinations in the way they can uh, enter the game. Uh, so if we look at the first one on the top left there, uh, A enters first, and then C, and then B. 
Uh, and we know from the previous slide that when A plays alone, he generates seven. Uh, and we also know that when A and C play together, they generate 15. Um, <clears throat> so that means that the contribution for C, when they play in that order, is actually eight, because seven plus eight is 15. Uh, so then we have all these variants, and you can see that the contribution of the different players, depending on when they enter the game, is actually quite different. Um, so the next step, now when we have all the numbers, is to actually calculate the Shapley values themselves. Uh, and the calculation of that is basically to take the marginal contribution of each of the players for all the different combinations based in which order they enter the game. Um, so for A, we have all these numbers, so 7, 7, 10, 3, 9, and 10. Uh, and we divide that by 6 to get the contribution of player A to the 19, that is the total. Uh, so then we know that of the 19 generated, uh, we should give credit to A uh, with 7.7. .7. And then we do the same thing for the other players, which means that we now have a way to actually split the total revenue based on all the different players. Um, so it's a very good approach and it's quite straightforward, but when you get into, uh, say, uh, larger complexities, uh, a lot of different touch points. So say you want to do this in like a, a B2B context where maybe your aim is to see uh, how, much contributed, how much contribution do we get from sales and how much contribution do we get from marketing. And maybe you want to do attrib attribution to uh, a number of different salespeople and a number of different marketing activities. Uh, then the number of different combinations that we had in the last slide, that sort of grows exponentially. So when you get up to like uh, I think 13 different channels or touch points, then you're already in the billions. And if you get up to 15, then you're in the trillions, which makes this approach sort of uh, quite difficult to manage, uh, which is why Sebastian has a different approach. Thanks, Ola. I would like to make the transition to Shapley additive explanations, which is Shapley values, which Ola talked about, applied to the feature importance of machine learning models. Anyone here that knows what feature importance means in terms of machine learning models? Hands up. Oh, a great many. So I will refer to Shapley additive explanations as SHAP. And then you might wonder why should we use this on machine learning models in the first place? Ola touched the subject where the number of channels are very large. And also, you might want to add uh, the order of which you have touched the different channels into the equation. And suddenly, the computational aspect of it grows exponentially. And you cannot uh, solve this as an exact solution. So what you would need is some kind of approximation of the Shapley values. So for very complex attribution problems, you might not be able to do this calculation as we saw previously. You might be able to do some kind of uh, approximation instead. And not far from attribution modeling is uh, marketing mix modeling. Well, let's say you have a machine learning model or you are building one where you want to simulate the effect of different uh, marketing investments. Let's say you want to spend 10,000 euros more on Facebook ads. How will that, uh, in turn, um, affect the conversion rates of, of your potential leads? And also, if you want to understand uh, the importance and the effects of the features of your machine learning model or your marketing mix model on an individual level, and I will show you what I mean by individual level um, later in the presentation, and also, you should use this method if you want a more fairer feature attribution than uh, the standard implementations. In Python, there is a package called Shap, which I really recommend. And you can find it at GitHub, of course. So let's take the marketing mix modeling. So what is the problem that, that you want to solve? Uh, so you would really want to understand la how redirecting spend in different channels affect the conversion rates of your potential customer base. So what happens if you take spend from one channel and, and put that spend in another channel? How will that increase conversions or decrease co conversions? So one um, solution might be to take all the historical leads you have data about 
and then factor in all the different touch points they have been in contact with. So have they been in contact with your online channels, your offline channels, perhaps some of your affiliates, and what sales managers have they been in contact with? And then, of course, if they did convert or not. And then you build a machine learning model to try and capture the relationship between the touch point of the lead and if the lead converted or not. And the standard approach we, where you apply the feature importance of the machine learning model might look as, as follows. So you have your features, which might be the price you offer the customer, if the customer was in contact with an affiliate or not, if the, contact have been in con uh, if the lead have been in contact with your different online channels or offline channels, or if there was some kind of sales agent that made contact with this lead. And your target label, of course, in a machine learning setting would be if the customer converted or not. And then you can apply the standard gradient boosting model via the XG boost package. Let's say 100 trees and a learning rate of 0.1. And once you have trained your model, you can get this feature importance plot, which you see here. The feature importance plot, in this case, says that the affiliate variable was the most important for capturing the relationship between the features and the target label. And price comes as the second most important feature. However, it doesn't tell you the relationship between the feature and the conversion. So is a lower price really better for the customers converting or not? Or is your potential customer base more interested in a high-end product, which you can uh, simulate with a higher price, perhaps? So with Shapley values, you take the same model as you built before, but you just apply this py Python package to your model. And what you get is a much more richer explanation. In this example, on the x-axis, you will see the impact of a feature on the prediction of the model. So to the right of the zero on the x-axis, the feature will have a positive impact on the prediction, increasing the likelihood of the customer converting. And the opposite to the left of the, of the zero point. And each dot in this plot is an actual lead. And the color of the dot is the value of the feature for that lead. So a blue color, in terms of a binary, like has been in contact with an affiliate or not, blue would mean that they didn't have contact, while red means they had contact. And in this plot, we can see that um, having contact with an affiliate uh, significantly increases the, the likelihood of the customer converting. While as if you don't have contact with an affiliate, it will subtract from the average prediction, basically. And with the price, you can see here that a high price lowers the chance of conversion, while as you move towards the right, and you see that the price decreases, it goes from red to blue, you will see that the likelihood of conversion increases. So in this way, you can explain what, your, what, uh, what relationship your model has captured between your features and your target label in a much more richer way. And of course, it's uh, what I call backwards compatible. If you would like to have a similar plot as before, you can also take uh, like the absolute effect of this feature plotted as your standard bar chart. And that is... Uh, also the ne negative and positive values, and the absolute value of that, and the mean absolute value, of course. But where I think it gets really, really interesting is when you apply this on an observational, on an individual level, which means that you can look at a single lead, and you can say, this lead has been in contact with the online channel, one of the offline channels, he or she was presented with a price of 45 and has also been in contact with the sales agent W in this case. And in this plot, 
we see how each individual feature, how much that feature and the value of that feature moved the prediction of your model from the base value, which in this case is 0 0.21, up to the actual predicted value, which is 0 0.83. So what this means is that you can go in on an individual level and understand why did your model predict this value for your customer. And this, of course, applies to other domains than attribution modeling. Let's say you have a churn model, and you want to understand why did this customer churn. Or you have some other model where you are, due to regulations, expected to explain why you made a certain action for a customer. Then you can go in and say, this is exactly why we made this action. Since I have a few minutes left, I would also like to go briefly into uh, another aspect of the Shapley values, which are interactions. In this plot, we see the price on the x-axis, and colored red is if the lead was in contact with sales agent C in this uh, situation. And on the y-axis is how much it increased or decreased the prediction of the model. And what this might tell us is that sales agent C is worse at selling your product at a lower price than at a higher price. While as another sales agent has the op opposite relationship. So this sales agent is, is better at selling at a lower price but it's not as successful at selling at a higher price. And this might give you a hint on what kind of customers your different sales agents should approach or not. To sum this up, I would recommend you to take a look at Shapley values if you have anything uh, in terms of attribution modeling in your company. And if you need something more complex, if you have many channels, or if you want to mo model the order of the channels in which the lead were in contact with, you also want to take a look at machine learning models to try and approximate the relationship between the features and the target label. And also, on an individual level, you are able now to see what actually made your prediction higher or lower in a certain case so that you can explain to either stakeholders or some other parties why you took a certain action or not for this specific, specific customer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic.